Hello there, fellow sojourners, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriating the Culture. On today's episode, we'll be looking at the leaked videos from the Mouse House, which reveal the clear and present intent from Disney to indoctrinate children in media. I'm Pastor Shane, I'll be your rodent exterminator today as we appropriate some culture. <laughs> So as you may or may not be aware, Disney has responded rather poorly to the Florida Bill HB 1557, otherwise known as the Don't Say Gay Bill, or more properly known as the Parental Rights and Education Bill. Some employees objected to it and walked out of work. According to NPR, quote, some employees of the Walt Disney Company walked off the job Tuesday to protest what they said was the company's tepid response to a Florida bill that would restrict discussion of gender and sexuality in schools. Hundreds of employees were seen marching out of the company's headquarters in Burbank, California, Tuesday morning. So first of all, the language of the bill says instruction, not discussion, and it's not in schools, it's explicitly restricted to grades K through third. But being accurate or fastidious is not why we pay our tax dollars to NPR. Why do we? But yes, hundreds of employees in California walked out to protest a law in Florida. In response, CEO Bob Chapik gave all Disney employees a free complimentary map and 50% off at the gift shop if they could correctly identify California and Florida. No, he didn't. Instead, he complained about the bill to Governor DeSantis, which did nothing. But that is probably because Disney employees weren't protesting hard enough. A walkout ain't gonna do it. I propose that every California Disney employee goes on strike until that Florida law is repealed. That's the only way to really stick it to those Floridians. That'll get Bob to finally concede and go, that's it, we're moving Disney World out of Florida and to a blue state with a lot of cheap acreage available. Where's that complimentary map? Yeah. But Disney is not going to take this lying down. In fact, after the Florida bill became law, some high ups in the Disney Corporation called an all hands on deck meeting to discuss what can be done about it. Just because Florida schools won't indoctrinate kids K through third doesn't mean we won't. The leaked footage of the virtual meeting revealed the ways Disney has and will continue to further the LGBTQIA ideology. Disney diversity and inclusion manager Vivian Ware said this Last summer, we, we removed all of the um, gendered greetings in relationship to our life skills. So we no longer say ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Um, we, we've trained, we, we've provided training for all of our, our cast members in, in relationship to that. So now they know it's, it's hello everyone or hello friends. We, we are in the process of changing over those, those recorded messages. And so many of you are probably familiar when we brought the fireworks back to the Magic Kingdom. We no longer say ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we say dreamers of all ages. And so I love the fact that it's opened up the creativity, the opportunity for our cast members to look at that. We, we have our cast members working with merchandise, working with food and beverage, working with, with all of our guest facing areas where perhaps, you know, we, we want to create that magical moment with our cast members, with our guests. And we don't want to just assume because someone might be um, in, in our interpretation, maybe presenting as female, that they may not want to be called princess. So let's think differently about how do we really engage with our guests in a meaningful and inclusive way that makes it magical and memorable for everyone. A don't say girls policy. Now this is kind of obnoxious, but I can understand a little bit that a corporation might want to be inclusive and most importantly, inoffensive to everyone. As a straight cis male who presents as super masculine, I'm not offended by being called a dreamer. I've been called worse. But the agenda gets worse, much worse. Executive producer Latoya Ravenu says this. Like, I love Disney's content. I grew up watching, you know, all of the classics. They have been a huge, like informative part of my life but at the same time like i worked at small studios most of my career and i'd heard you know you hear whispers like I'd, I'd heard things like oh you know they won't let you show this at a disney show and i'm like okay so i was a little like sus when i started and but then my experience was bafflingly the opposite of what i had heard on my little pocket of like you know proud family disney tva um the showrunners were super welcoming, Meredith Roberts and like the, the, our leadership over there has been so welcoming to like my like not at all secret gay agenda. And so like, I, I feel like I felt like it was, I mean, like maybe it was that way in the past, but I guess like something must have happened in the last 
Like, you, like they are turning it around, they're going hard. And then all that like momentum that I felt like that sense of, I don't have to be afraid to like, let's have these two characters kiss. Let's in the background, this are, like I was just, wherever I could just basically adding queerness to like, the, if you see anything queer in the show, I'm proud of them. But like, I, I just was like, no one would stop me and no one was trying to stop me. Latoya has worked on such projects as Rise Up, Sing Out, The Proud Family, Final Space, Puppy Dog Pals, and Super Monsters. Disney production coordinator Alan March added this. Yeah, um, I've had the privilege of working with the Moon Girl team for the last two years, and they've been really open to exploring queer stories. And part of, I'm on the production side, uh, part of uh, the work that I feel like I can put in is um, making sure that we take place in modern day New York, so making sure that that's like an accurate reflection of New York. So I put together like a tracker of our background characters to make sure that we have like a, the full breadth of expression. And uh, we got into a very similar conversation, Carrie, of like, oh, all of our like gender non-conforming characters are in the background. And so it's not just a numbers game um, of how many LGBTQ plus characters you have. We got the further, uh, the, the more centered a story is on a character, the more nuanced you get to get into their story. And especially with like trans characters, you can't see if someone is trans. There's not one way to look trans. And so kind of the only way to have these like canonical trans characters, canonical asexual characters, canonical bisexual characters is to give them stories where they can like be their whole selves. Right. It isn't sufficient to have LGBTQIA characters in the background. They need to be front and center, and the stories need to be about them. If you've been paying attention to the content coming out of Disney, this really isn't that surprising. And the idea that it's going to turn around anytime soon is dispelled by Disney corporate president Carrie Burke, who had this to say. I'm here as a mother of, of two queer children, actually. Um, uh, one transgender child. Um, um, and one pansexual child, um, and and also as a leader. Um, and that was the thing that really got me because I have heard so much from so many of my colleagues over the course of the last couple of weeks um, in open forums and through emails and phone conversations. And um, I feel a responsibility to speak, um, not just for myself, but for them. Um, to all of us, we, we, had a, we had an open forum last week at 20th where um, again, the home of, of really incredible groundbreaking LGBTQIA stories over the years where um, one of our execs stood up and said, you know, we only have a handful of queer leads in our content. And I went, what? I, that can't be true. And I, and I, and I realized, oh, it, it actually is true. We have many, many, many LGBTQIA characters in our stories. And and, and yet we don't have enough leads um, and narratives in which gay characters just, just get to be characters um, mm -hmm. and, and not have to be about gay stories. And so um, that's been very eye-opening for me. Um, and and I, I can tell you um, it's something that I feel perhaps had this moment not happened, um, I as a leader and me as my colleagues would not have focused on. And, and going forward, um, I, I certainly will be more so. I know that we will be, and, um, and I hope this is a moment where, shoot, um, the 50% of the tears, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> are coming. Um, uh, we don't, we just don't allow each other to go backwards. Wow, what are the odds that two of her children just totally randomly pledge allegiance to the rainbow flag? Why, it's almost as if these are values being taught and inculcated, which is the reason that they object to the Florida bill. For best results, you gotta get them young. If kids can grow up without that indoctrination, they might not identify as LGBTQIA. Now maybe we'll discuss the psychology of that at a later date. Why does this woman want her children to be a part of the alphabet game? 
gang. It's sort of a new flavor of Munchausen syndrome or Munchausen by proxy. Their kids are in the alphabet game and they're supportive. Aren't they such wonderful parents? They get to feel noble and good and get to feel like they're a part of a cause and their lives feel important. There's psychology at play. There's also just demons and spiritual fortunes as well. And you can tell that because there's no principle. Oh yes, we're going to stuff our content with gay, lesbian, queer, and transgender stuff because that's so important and matters deeply to us. Of course, we'll take all that out when we send it over to China, and not a single one of these people who protested the Florida bill will walk out over that. Not one. But what I really want us to see here is that these leaked videos reinforce a couple of our core principles at ATC. Number one, they recognize that entertainment media is a huge force in shaping hearts and minds and impacting the culture. That is why they have a not-so-secret gay agenda and why they insert LGBTQIA ideology everywhere that they can. They want it in the background. They want it in the foreground. They want stories about LGBTQIA issues. They want characters that are incidentally LGBTQIA. That is, it has nothing to do with the plot or story, just there to normalize it. They want the LGBTQIA LGBTQIA ideology to permeate the culture, to be the air that we breathe and the water that we drink, and the church needs to wake up to the war going on. Because they're not wrong. Entertainment media is a huge force in shaping hearts and minds and impacting the culture. The church desperately needs to get into that space to counter it. I've been screaming about this for 20 years. That's why we're doing ATC, to make people wake up to these things. That's why I write novels. Nobody reads them. But if we're going to go down, we should at least go down swinging. We need a not-so-secret Christian agenda and insert a Christian ideology everywhere that we can. I want it in the background. I want it in the foreground. I want stories about Christian values and issues. I want characters that incidentally are Christian just there to normalize it. I want the Christian ideology to permeate the culture to be the air that we breathe and the water that we drink. Our enemies understand the importance of that, and we should too. Number two, notice that it's not about their kids. It's about your kids. That mother has her queer kids. Her kids are receiving her indoctrination just fine. But that's not enough, because she's an evangelist. She's not Amish. She doesn't want her ideology to be contained to just her household. And that's a lesson for us as well. It is not sufficient for us to just focus on our kids. It is not sufficient to just seclude ourselves or isolate ourselves. We need to be advancing the Christian worldview in the culture. Alrighty, I got a little bothered there, so we'll stop. As usual, if you like what we're doing here, like, subscribe, rate, review, share. These are little things, but they do matter. We're trying to start a movement here. You can also buy a book or leave a review. You can join my author's Facebook page or follow me on the major and minor socials. And God willing, I'll see you next week for more Appropriate in the Culture.